Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. I have a good friend of mine, Rachel Perry, joining us for a conversation about relationships today. Now, relationships are so, so important. You know, I love a good spreadsheet. I love measuring KPIs. I love the numbers. I love strategy, all of that kind of stuff. But one sort of missing piece that we don't talk about as much is the importance of relationships, both the relationships that you have with your clients or your patients and the relationships that you have with other business owners. Now, you guys might notice that a lot of the people that I bring on to this, the podcast are people that I have met and I'll say, oh, we share the same coach or we are in this program together because I'm always doing what I can to continue to learn and grow and better myself so that I have more relevant and, and more value to share with you guys as far as the latest strategies and, and what's going on in the world. Because uh, as my husband has been saying lately, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So I always want to improve my mind, improve my skills and all of that. But I'm also wanting to improve my relationships. And Rachel is someone who we met because we shared the same coach. And it's so, these types of people, these other experts that are running businesses can help you when you go through the ups and downs that is the entrepreneurial roller coaster that all of us go through. Like if you don't have appointments on the books one day, or if you are doing so well and then you sell zero retail in one day, you can be on like a super high high and then go down to a low. And sometimes it can be really challenging for other people to relate, whether your spouse, you know, maybe your spouse or your partner is um, working a nine to five job and they're not an entrepreneur and they don't understand the different challenges that we face as entrepreneurs. Um, it can be so helpful to have other business owners, other people in your circle that can, you know, pull you back up, dust you off and tell you to get back out there and keep doing what you're doing. So it's good for that. Relationships are good for that, for that support, for that just comfort and also to have people shine some blind spots on areas of your business that you may not be aware of. It can also be good for relationships. If you become friends with someone who has the same ideal client as you, you can easily overlap and create different promotions. You see this with my, my very dear friend, Tara Zerker, who she and I met in DC through an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial <laughs> networking group. And we connected, we became friends, we you know built our relationship. And now we offer, you know, a joint program. We offer successful ads club together because what she offers is extremely helpful for estheticians and for spa owners and helping them build their business. So there's all kinds of referral relationships that can happen if you become friends with a hairstylist or a massage therapist, or even among estheticians, maybe one of you is a lash artist and one of you does spray tans, like form that connection, form that relationship where you can help support one another and build one another up. Now, I wanted to bring Rachel on. Uh, we've actually been trying for a few months to get her on the podcast, but our schedules were just not totally working. But we, today we made it happen. And we talk about all the different types of relationships that are important to nurture. So those with your patients or clients the and those with referral relationships and other business owners. So go ahead, have a listen and be sure to keep the conversation going over in the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group. All right, so let's go ahead and play that interview. All right, Rachel Perry, I am so excited to 
finally have you on the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. So it was, when was, when was the impact summit in March? Yeah. Or April. April. I think it was April. End of April, beginning of March, sometime around there. Yeah. We went to a conference together while we Mm -hmm. sat on the plane next to each other. (laughs) Which was not planned. Not planned. That was like, you know, divine intervention. It really was. So we had a flight from Chicago to Los Angeles. Uh And I would say a good hour or two of that flight, we were talking about different podcast ideas of things we could do together, mixed in with a lot of laughs, of course, because right. yeah. you're very yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but yes, it was. A, and, do, and also, please note, <laughs> sweet Daniela was stuck next to me for an additional hour and a half because we were on the runway, like, right. The tarmac oh, for yes. a while. And we were just talking and talking. And then it got to the point. It was like a five hour flight. Like, this is so long. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you still want to talk to me? Like, do we, do we keep talking or do we just not talk <laughs> or what do we do? No, it was never like that, but it was a long time. It was a long time, but I knew without a doubt that I wanted to have you on because you are so good with developing relationships and maintaining relationships, maintaining your network and doing it in a really professional way, but that you still feel like you're friends. And Mm -hmm. it's that, it's that like, I know authentic is one of those like Mm -hmm. words right now that everyone's like, Oh, authentic communication, but you legitimately do that very, very well. And I feel like in spa, it's so important. We are a very relationship-based industry and, you know, understanding what the boundaries are and how to develop those relationships, how to make your patients and clients feel comfortable and feel valued and feel, you know, not like a number Mm -hmm. is so, so important. So I wanted to bring you on to chat about like how you have this superpower and how you teach other people (laughs) how to do that as well. I love, I love that you call it a superpower. It is. I've always wanted to be a superhero. Um, you know, I think it's really, as you said, authentic. And I really think that is something that is so important and we hear it all the time and, you know, be authentic and that's how you're going to succeed in your business is be real. But in reality, I mean, it is the truth. We need to be authentic. And when we say authentic, just being open to building these relationships with people. For example, you know, when you have someone who's talking about their kids or they're talking about how they had a really rough morning or whatever it is, being able to relate to them by sharing a little tiny similar situation or being open to what they say makes such a difference. And I think with, with my clients and my, um, just even just the people who follow me really taking the time when they, when they respond to, maybe it's a story on Instagram, or maybe it's, um, something that I posted on Instagram, taking the time to start building that relationship rather than just, you know, liking what they say, start a conversation because a conversation is where those relationships start. So I know you're really big with accountability too, and, and you mm-hmm. work a lot with your clients on accountability. One thing, I'm going to see what you think about my process. So okay. I can be your client for a second. Um, so when I was practicing in uh, doing treatments for, mm-hmm. for patients at med spas, I would always write out, like I obviously had to write out our conversations, not in our chart notes, but I would write it in this other section of like their kids' names, what vacations they're going Mm -hmm. on, like these kind of things. And then because it's not as natural to me to, you know, be on social media or be, you know, it just, I kind of get on my zone of what's in front of me in that moment. I actually created tasks on my calendar that would be connect with this person or follow up with this person. 
And when I met my husband, it was so funny. He's, he's an INTJ. So for those of you who follow Myers-Briggs and you know, he's like engineered, data-driven, like very objective. And he told me that he actually had a system for friends where he's like, this is my inner circle of friends. <gasps> and every quarter he would be like, connect with so-and-so if I haven't connected with them. And that was how he maintained his relationship. I love that. He's like, I've got my spreadsheet. You know, it's like, okay, whatever works, honey. <laughs> I love that. What do you think about, as far as accountability mm -hmm. in business relationships, mm -hmm. do you have systems like that? Or is it something that's just more innate for someone who's like an extroverted personality type or really good? I think, it's good. I think you need to have systems like that. I think no matter, even if it's, even if that's something that comes really naturally to you, when you have a lot of business relationships, it's easy to get, to forget. It's easy to sort of not, not stay focused. Something that I teach my clients is we need to build these habits so that it's just automatic for us. You just want to automate everything that you do. And I don't mean automate where it just becomes a routine and you take the person out of the, the equation, but by like you taking those notes and tr triggering things for you, that's so important. You know, like when you're done working with someone and I don't want to, I mean, I want to use the right terminology. <laughs> so I apologize if I don't, but, um, when you, when you're do done, working with someone like you, like you did, just start writing down the things that you remember because it will trigger you next time you work with them or next time you see them. And that makes all the difference. Just one little thing. I feel like it's the little it, details. It's so the little details. Are you kidding? I, um, when I went to <laughs> last time I went to get my Botox, um, it was around my birthday and, um, I, it was the same birthday as my amazing esthetician. What do I say? What's the right word? Injector. Yeah. Injector. So I was going to say uh, injector. Nurses. It's yeah. Injectors. It, so it's different state by state. Mm -hmm. There, there are some states where estheticians can inject, although it's very okay. unusual. Um, in general, you have to be a nurse or a physician to inject. Okay. So he is he wasn't a, a physician's assistant, but I was going to say injector. I really you was. Say injector. I should have just gone with my gut. But anyway, he remembered that we had the same birthday and made a comment about that. And I was that the guy I connected you with? Yes, it is. It is. And he's so fun. He's so fun. But I, that was a, just a little, a little tidbit that made me feel like he remembered who I was. And special. Right? Yeah. It's, yes. You feel seen as a person and exactly. not just as a number. Exactly. And I think, and we'll, and I keep going back because I feel like he knows who I am. Now, does he? I don't know. And I don't really care because I felt like he did. So having that system of going back and writing down those little random things that stuck out to you in that initial, um, you know, consultation is huge to build those relationships. So... Another thing that we talk a lot about on this podcast is obviously, you know, strategy for growth and things like that. And, and one of the really popular concept concepts is something called gift card marketing. And mm -hmm. so essentially I'm teaching the estheticians or spa owners to go out, partner with other businesses, um, build the relationship with them, and then find out like, is this a business that I could create a referral relationship with? So we have a whole episode on that. So if you haven't listened to that, we'll be sure to include that in the show notes. But now that I have you here, Rachel, I want to know, like, is there a difference or how do you go about building relationships with other business owners mm -hmm. compared to building relationships with your clients or patients? Um, that's such a good question because I'm actually getting ready to record a podcast on you know, building a community as, as business owners, we need to be surrounded by other business owners. And I, I do think it's a little different because you are going to be having different conversations and there's going to be a different level of, um, openness, if you will, 
I think it's so important, number one, to have, to, to start building these business relationships. If, if not just for your business, I mean, just the things that you guys are going to learn together and help with, you know, help each other. How do you do that in your business? Well, in my business, um, well, I'm involved in a mastermind. So, so a group of other online entrepreneurs who come together, we're in a Facebook group together, and then we have um, three retreats out of the year and we come together and we just learn and we share ideas and we ask questions. So I think, I think that is so important, regardless of what profession you're in, you need to surround yourself, especially if referrals, um, are a big part of your business. That's absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys can still grow together, right? You can, so as far as building that relationship, um, it is going to be a different one because it's a business relationship. Um, I'm a big fan of masterminds. I think I told you, I just joined a mastermind yes. as well. And it's for me, the benefit of having a group of people. I, I always want to be the small fish in the agreed. Pond. Always. Like, I want to be around people who are doing bigger, better things than me, because then I can see like, Oh, that's possible. I yes. can do that. And, yes. and looking at something as like, um, it, you just, you get the motivation, you get the desire. And then you also have people from outside of your industry mm -hmm. who can say like, Hey, this works in this industry. How can you apply it to spa? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really powerful. A lot of people, I think the default I don't know if you went through this yourself, but the default's like, oh, I should go to BNI. I should go to the Chamber of Commerce. I should go to, you know, and and those things can be great, you know, but it depends on the area that you live in. I feel like there's a lot of um, like insurance people or like real estate. People. I was going to say real estate yeah. or network marketing. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe that's your ideal client and that's great. There, mm -hmm. I'm sure there can be, relationships built from that. But what I particularly like about a mastermind is you have this group and it's usually a group of no more than 25 to 30 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. at most that you're actually developing friendships with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the core of any successful, you know, business relationship. Is this someone who I would actually be friends with right. outside of? you know, it's very business. true. So it's true. Not, it's going to be hard to like, uh, going back to that authentic space, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to authentically mm -hmm. recommend that business. Yes. Agreed. I think, yeah, I agree. You don't, I always say, I don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room ever. I just always want to be surrounded with people who know more, um, who are further along in their business because that's how I grow. Um, and it's true. You don't, you, you really do need these relationships to be successful because when you're just hanging out by yourself, I mean, you can do so well for so long, but then you really do. There are different techniques. There are different um, ideas. There are different ways to grow that we need to be open to all the time. And I think that's another thing that I would say as far as building relationships, either with, you know, other businesses or clients is, just being willing to get uncomfortable, not necessarily like uncomfortable situations with, with your clients. That is not where I'm going. But when you, when we you have plenty of opportunities, <laughs> I mean, we do Brazilian waxing in the world of aesthetics. So we've got you all might just get out. <laughs> talking about being authentic. Um, <laughs> that's as real as you can get, but, uh, you know, just being willing to take a leap get uncomfortable, do something that makes you scared because that's how you grow. Because when you are a little bit more vulnerable as, and I'm talking about our business relationships now, like in your mastermind or, or, uh, whatever group you're involved in or want to be involved in making yourself a little bit vulnerable as in sharing where you struggle and where you want to go. Because when you open up like that, you are, you are allowing yourself to grow. Yeah. And it's okay to say that you don't have it all figured out. Yes. It's okay to it say really that is. you struggle with social media or that you struggle with knowing your numbers or that you struggle with, 
Because it's, Mm -hmm. you know, especially in the world of spa, like I feel like it's such a unique space where they are, um, you know, 70% of estheticians are solo estheticians. So there's Mm -hmm. a huge amount of these very small business owners, these estheticians who are renting Mm -hmm. rooms, they're doing the facials, they're doing all of the treatments, they're ordering their supplies, they're ordering their retail, they're doing all the administrative tasks. So Mm -hmm. they are in it, they Mm -hmm. are in the business, but then they're also expected to work on the business, which is an entire job in itself. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, you know, most small business owners, they don't have the demand or the, like the requirement of what's, you know, to, because to work on someone that it's a lot of energy, it's a lot of emotional energy. Like you've got to know technically the skills. So these are very intelligent women who understand the anatomy of the skin. They understand chemically what's going on with ingredients. They're understanding like how to address and treat so many different skin conditions. So they've Mm got to have that brain and be able to understand like, Hey, I've got to know all the contraindications for this. I've got to understand what products to recommend and how they work. And oh yeah, I also have to know (laughs) marketing and admin and bookkeeping and and it it gets. Oh, and build relationships with my, (laughs) with my clients. Yeah. You know, that's all. No bigs. <laughs> like, come on, guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. It's a mm-hmm. lot. And it's it's something that can be very overwhelming because there's so many sure so many estheticians who are so talented. They're so good at what they're doing. But the reality is, like, you can be the best esthetician in the world, like skill-wise, right. technically. But if you don't know the business side of things, it, you're not going to, you're going to be your town's best kept secret. You're going to be sitting in your room in there, you know, having the ability, having your superpower mm-hmm. to solve all of these skincare problems, but mm-hmm. nobody's going to know about you. Right. And so, you know, relationships for me, it's one of the, the easiest steps out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. If you're like, you know what, Facebook ads like I'm not in a space that I can even comprehend what's going on there. And I um, totally get that by the way. Yeah. Like it's, there's all these different strategies that mm-hmm. it's, you know, just can be overwhelming, but you and I have shared the same coach and he says, action creates clarity. Yeah. And it's that one baby step. Yeah. That one baby step, you know, start by building relationships, start by building, you know, finding other businesses that can refer you by building relationships with your clients or patients. Even if you have three, you know, if you only have three, if you're giving them everything that you can give and, and really making them feel seen and feel valued, they're going to keep coming back and they're going to refer people to you as well. And as you build your confidence, then you know, you have your network of peers, you have more confidence, and then you can start to dip your toe into the higher level strategies, but it's, it's a process. It is a process. And it's, it's so interesting that, that we're talking about this because this has been kind of the theme this week with, with me and in some stories and in my Facebook group, because so many entrepreneurs, and it doesn't matter what profession, what area you're in, it can seem very overwhelming at times, especially when you see where you want to be and you're, you're not there yet. And all the steps that you need to get there or all the things that you have to do daily, it can seem so overwhelming. So I have been saying exactly what what you just said. You just have to take little steps and don't focus on the end goal. I mean, yes, that's where we're focused, right? As far as that's where we're headed. But sometimes it can seem overwhelming because there are so many steps in between. And just by taking one little step at a time is how you're going to get there. And you can't, And so often we just want to quit. Just forget it. Like this is, it's just too much. I can't even, and we've all been there when it gets like that. Especially like after I had Taya, I was like, all right, I'm just going to close my business. Like I'm just going to be a stay at home mom. And that's, uh, that's going to be my life because there's (laughs) no way I can raise a baby and run a business. And 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 you guys, I mean, yeah. And it is a while before I could get back. 
Because you're, it is taking, like you said, a lot out of you physically, mentally, emotionally. So it's, it's a big, and it is easy to just want to quit. Um, but like, like Daniela said, just take one, just one step at a time, one small step at a time. Yeah. And that, that truly is, even if you're just taking a teeny tiny baby step Mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone, it's like that allows you to see the possibilities that allows you to see the, the, um, impact that you can have of like, what is possible? I, I, there was a girl in my Facebook group who she had listened to one of the episodes. Um, the one with, uh, Julia, Christina, you know, Mm -hmm, Julia mm -hmm. love her. And it was about moving past your fear and past your vulnerabilities. And this woman who had posted in the group, she was like, you know, I listened to that episode and I decided I was going to get over myself and I was just going to send a text out to my clients and invite them to come in. It was before Mother's Day. And so she wanted to invite them to come in and get and treat themselves. Like, don't wait for Mother's Day. Just take Mm -hmm. care of yourself now. She wrote this Mm -hmm. like really cute email. She got seven people booked from sending one text and made $3,000 and wow. from them coming back in, you know, those people booking and then buying packages. And this was a solo esthetician, someone who, you know, was afraid to go out of her comfort zone. And I said to her on the post, I was like, so now you see what's possible. That was one baby step, mm-hmm. one baby step that you took. Mm-hmm. And now you see what can be next for you. Because she did it, you know, she moved past her fear. All uh, she's already obviously very good at what she does. Her clients love her, you know, and because while uh, they just needed that invite. Yes. You know, I think that's another thing going back to the original question of building relationships and things, loving on your customers is so big and so important, just loving them. And, and that doesn't mean you guys like texting or calling them and being like, I love you. <laughs> That's not what I mean. obviously that. <laughs> that would not be good for business. Um, <laughs> but really just giving like that opportunities for people to treat themselves or um, just, just giving them what they need, I think is so important. Um, that just, it goes so far when you just take that time to love on your clients. One really cool thing that we have actually done at a couple of spas that I worked at was, um, a VIP thank you. So yeah. we would run like at the end of the year around holidays, we would run a report for who our top clients were. Mm-hmm. And we would invite like the top, either top 10 or top 20 in for a complimentary treatment. And that is amazing. For us, it was, you know, it was the cost of treatment. It was the time, but the goodwill that that brought oh. for our clients who were yes. already like, oh my gosh, you're personally inviting me in for a free treatment or for a VIP party or something, whatever it was that we were doing. Yep. Um, because you guys think about it. Our clients, like when I was at Bellasante, the spa I was working at in Boston, I would, around the holidays, I would have so many clients bring me, you know, leave me a hundred dollar tip, bring me yeah. in candles or books or whatever, like bring me all kinds of gifts. I'm like, this is, they're thinking about me when it's mm-hmm. holiday time. Like mm-hmm. what can we do to think about them as well? You know, and to really like make the relationship two-sided. Right. It's that's, and, and cause that's going to build loyalty. Something else that I think is super fun to do um, is to get a Starbucks card, like, you know, and you only have to, you know, whatever you want to put on there, depending on how many clients you have or whatever. Imagine we, I sometimes do like a hundred dollars on a Starbucks card virtual. And then I would text it out or I would email it out, um, to my list. And obviously every single person on there is not going to be able to (laughs) get a cup of coffee, um, because it'll be gone in no time. But it's just the idea that I'm, we're sending free coffee to them just because just for a treat and it cost us a hundred dollars, but in reality it helped build the loyalty 
build the, okay. that relationship. So it's little things like that that don't need to cost you a ton of money. Obviously, $100 is not a little amount, but it's still a little something that you can give to your, your customers. Yeah. Even just $5 gift cards, you know, if you're doing it in person rather than uh, agree out, you yes. know, and just say, I just really wanted to thank you, you know, and include that in a thank you note or mm-hmm. something like that. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't big. It's really the thought like, um, you know, I remember th- I just celebrated a birthday, um, this month and I got like some voice memos from people like voice text. And oh I was my like, gosh, that, that is so sweet. My, my mastermind coach sent me one and sent me the most thoughtful, not just like happy birthday posting on your Facebook page right. or whatever. It was like, just wanted you to know, I was really thinking of you and da, da, da. And so I'm like, that made me feel really special and yeah. really heard. And so I was like, think about how, what you could do for your clients. Yeah. Sending a voice message. Um, or gosh, a voice that would text. be incredible. That would be incredible. I mean, if I had that, and then if you do that, then that's going to build, you know, you talk about referrals. I'm going to be for referring, you know, my injector to everyone. If, if I got these vo- a voice message. Yeah. And that amazing. doesn't cost you anything, but no, time, you know, and it's going to be maybe two minutes of your time to mm-hmm. press the microphone mm-hmm. button, you know, send the voice text. And there's just something that's more personal about it than like sending a happy birthday text or posting on Facebook. Agreed. I love it. I do too. And I kind of hope he's listening. (laughs) You know, Hey, what's up? (laughs) I also take gift cards, discounts, (laughs) product. Oh, oh my dear. You're so funny. (laughs) Okay. So, um, if you had one piece of advice that you could leave our listeners with, what would that be? I think it would be to, um, oh, one piece of advice. I hate when people ask me this because that's, and I, but I ask people, I interview the same thing. So get ready for that, Daniela. Um, I think probably to really focus on building the relationships, whether they be business relationships, as far as with other business owners, or whether it be, you know, with your, with your clients. And we just talked about some ideas, just ways to really focus on the relationships, because when you focus on those relationships, when you really put time into them, it's going to multiply. You're going to get more clients. You're going to get, these clients are going to end up coming more often. They're going to be spending more. You are going to be building such a strong client base just because you're taking the time to build a relationship. So sometimes it seems like it's going to take forever. Relationships don't happen overnight, but, but don't quit. Don't, don't give up. Just keep, keep focusing on those relationships because it really will bless your business tremendously. I love that. So where can people find you? Where's the best place to follow you, to hang out with you? If people so want to stay in touch. my favorite place to be is Instagram. I'm Rachel A. Perry on Instagram. And then I have a podcast too called Making the Leap in Business and in Life. And um, I would love, I would love to hang out with you guys over there. Well, we will be sure to include all of those links below the episode. Thank you so much, my dear, for your time, so for welcome. making us laugh <laughs> and for sharing your bits of advice about relationships. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me. I love it. All right. So if you guys want to keep the conversation going, be sure to head over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group. We've got monthly Facebook lives where we do goal setting and planning sessions. We've got our most recent podcast episodes and lots of other resources for you to build your business. So I will catch you on the next episode. 